Well, 2016 was a great year for gaming. We had the likes of Final Fantasy XV, Uncharted 4, Dishonored 2, some great games. Some games weren't as good, and in this video, we'll be going over the top 10 worst games of 2016. Let's get right into this. Number 10, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutants in Manhattan. Platinum Games has a good track record for this game. One that didn't turn out so well, however, was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutants in Manhattan. Poor and bland gameplay, which is highly unusual for a Platinum title, and considering this game fails where Platinum typically succeeds, it just makes the overall experience very lacking. You green tweeds think you got the best of old Bebop, do you? Well, you're all wrong. Cause Bebop's the best there is! Heck to the yeah! You're in the king's turf now! Remember what I taught you. Number 9, Mighty Number no. 9. Mighty Number no. 9 was funded through Kickstarter all the way back in 2013. The game was expected to be a spiritual successor to Mega Man, it was led by Keiji Inafune, and on the surface it seemed to have a lot of potential. Unfortunately, after several delays, the game hit the market back in June and it was a colossal disappointment. It has no real soul of its own and a lot of the content is very redundant and recycled. Technical issues were also a plenty. A successor to Mega Man, this was not. Number 8, Homefront The Revolution. The first Homefront game was good. It wasn't a fantastic game, but it had a great premise and solid gameplay. Homefront The Revolution is the follow-up and it's an open world game and while that sounds amazing on the surface, it failed to build upon what the first game did. The narrative was lacking, which is a shame since that was one of the stronger elements of the first game. The game also had a ton of technical issues, from a low frame rate to stuttering, it was bad. This may mark the end of Homefront, which sucks because there was potential there, Revolution however did not realize it. Number 7, Roller Coaster Tycoon World. Roller Coaster Tycoon World was the fourth installment in the franchise and probably the worst. The game is an ugly, broken mess with a ton of bugs and glitches, and for those that invested in the game early on, the final product didn't offer anything much better, just a bunch of unfulfilled promises. Number 6, Coffin Dodgers. Coffin Dodgers pits you as one of seven retirement village residents, each racing in their scooters. It's a racer with some potential with its mechanics, but the execution is just off. There's not a lot of depth to it, and it's a bit too simple. If it's expanded upon, it could actually be a pretty decent game. On the plus side, it is a very easy platinum trophy, so if you're into that, there's that.
Number five, Seven Days to Die on consoles. Seven Days to Die is actually an okay game on PC, however, the console version is an absolute nightmare. It's an awful port to the point where you have to question how this game passed QA testing. The solid foundation is still there within the console version with pretty good crafting and gameplay mechanics, however, with a port like this, it's borderline unplayable. Number 4, Weeping Doll. Weeping Doll is one of the most interesting PlayStation VR games. It's a dark comedy and horror game with influence from games like PT. Even with good ideas, the game isn't all that frightening, the puzzles are bland, gameplay and aesthetics are poor, and worst of all, you can finish the game in under an hour. Quality horror games and VR seem like a match made in heaven, however, Weeping Doll is not one that you should check out. And today, something happened. Something happened. This house is full it's of secret full secrets. secrets. But can you unearth them? Earth them? Number 3, Alkine's Gun. Alkine's Gun is the third installment in the Death to Spies franchise. It's set during the Cold War, and this is another game with a very interesting premise. With a very unique setting, unfortunately, the execution is just a mess. It tries to do the Hitman formula, but it never comes fully together thanks to the awful controls and AI, coupled with the terrible visuals that honestly look bad for a last generation game, let alone a current gen title. If Alkine's Gun was released 10 years ago, maybe it would have been a good title, but in 2016, not worth it. Number 2, Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters is a twin-stick shooter, a typical formula you see. Some games really pull it off and they act great as a budget downloadable title. Unfortunately with Ghostbusters, the game went for a whopping $50. Mechanically, this is probably one of the better games on this list, but the price was downright insulting and even if it was priced accordingly, it would be one that you would avoid. There's much better options. The Ghostbusters are back in a brand new video game, and it's helping season on ghouls. These new recruits aren't messing around. They're working together to catch ghosts all over the city and upgrading their gear to be even more powerful. Here's your homework. Don't! Finally, number one, Resident Evil Umbrella Corps. Umbrella Corps is a spin-off to the Resident Evil franchise and is a multiplayer-focused tactical shooter. The maps in Umbrella Corps are also filled with zombies. Interesting at first glance, but that perception quickly changes after playing the game. Sloppy, seemingly unfinished gameplay design, balancing issues galore, awful visuals, small maps, I can go on and on. Nearly every element that makes a quality shooter Umbrella Corps fails at, and in a year with the likes of Overwatch, Battlefield 1, and Titanfall 2, there is no way you can recommend Umbrella Corps. So that wraps up our countdown of the top 10 worst games of 2016. What do you think? Did you play any of these games? And if you did, what did you think about them? Think we forgot to mention a game? Let us know in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye.